I welcome you all who are assembled here for the very first press conference uh, of the 54th International Film Festival of India being organized by uh, PIB. And I welcome all the guests who have come here and also um, all uh, the film enthusiasts, uh, the media friends, and the delegates who are joining online with us. Uh, today, um, we have with us a special guest. Uh, what better way to have an opening press conference than having the guest of the opening film itself. So we have uh, the director of the opening film, uh, Catching Dust, uh, Stuart Gatt, director, is here with us. And also uh, the producers, Mark David and Jonathan Katz. Stuart is also one of the producers, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I hope uh, all of you have seen the film yesterday. How many of the have seen the film yesterday? Yeah, good. I think it will, I will have a good discussion then. Now, before I start, um, uh, Stuart, uh, this is your first time to India, first to Ifi, Goa. Uh, mind sharing experience? Yeah, wow. it's been a, it's been a Oh, sorry. Um, it's been an incredible experience for me being here at Ifi in Goa, particularly for me because my mother's Indian and it's a, an honor to be here and, and share this film with the motherland. It feels very special for me. But Ifi in general, Remove My Indian Heritage, is an incredible festival and, and it's an honor to be here. About the film, um, Catching Dust is uh, Stuart's a feature directional debut. Uh, uh, we are waiting for a trailer. If it's loaded, we'll play that. But I'll just give a, a brief uh, plot. Uh, the, it's a thriller. It follows a criminal husband and a frustrated artist wife whose fractious hideout in the remote desert is disrupted by the surprise arrival of a hipster couple from New York City who are running, from, uh, are running away from problems of their own. Then the tension, secrets, and relationship, the cracks widen against the backdrop of the desert. So uh, Moriarty stars as Gina. Uh, she, she's an artist and painter, uh, ready to dream big, but uh, tired of her uh, controlling partner, Clyde, uh, played by Jay Courtney. So exhausted with the controlling ways of her criminal partner, Gina is preparing to leave. When a new couple shows up at the commune in a trailer from New York, eager to make a new life for themselves away from the hustle and bustle of the city. But things quickly turn dangerous for both the couples as tensions boil over and egos come to a head as attempts to connect leave everyone frayed and on the edge of um, disaster. So um, it, um, it, the film captivates the audience at a a profound level of finding solace in the face of evident hopelessness and despair. Uh, so uh, those who have not seen the film, I hope we're able to connect with the plot to an extent. And um, Stuart, I would like to ask you about this. Uh, from short films uh, to your feature debut, uh, what made you switch and why this, uh, this story? Why Catching Dust? Please tell us. What inspired you? I think um, I've been asked that question a lot and I've realized that <clears throat> there's two ways, I think as a writer, that I've developed stories. And there's some ideas that you move towards, like some of my short films dealt with political issues and it felt like issues that I wanted to, to step into. But sometimes ideas come to you and I feel like with Catching Dust, it was an idea that came to me. I'd, I'm, I'm a daydreamer and I'd, I'd always have visions of a, a trailer in the, t in the middle of the desert. I don't know where they came from, I don't know why I was getting them. But um, I became, some ideas you become more curious about and some ideas stick with you more and, and soon you become obsessed about that image and then you fill in a story. Um, who might live there, why they're there, what's the worst thing that can happen to them and soon you have a script and you feel compelled to tell the story. Uh, so what made you partner with him and do the film? So um, <coughs> I produced Stewart's last um, uh, short film had come on um, on board with that, and we we had a very good working relationship. I read the script shortly after that for Speaking what was the mic. what was to become Catching Dust, and uh, 
I was just drawn in by the characters. They were so well developed and I could really imagine them being on the page. And what's so exciting about being here is seeing that journey come to life from having read the script and talked about it at our very first discussion of this story to now seeing it living and breathing and being shared with audiences and with all of you. It's, it's been an amazing journey. Uh, we thank you for thank hosting you. us. Thank you. thank you, Mark. And uh, Katz, you want to say a few lines? Yeah, sure. Uh, it's nice to see everybody. So um, I got involved in the film. Because I've been producing films for a long time, and, and I know Mark, and Mark brought me the script, and I really enjoyed it. And I thought, okay, I could, I could see it all coming together, and I thought it was very strong. And it's very exciting as a producer when you have the opportunity to produce somebody's debut film, um, you know, and, and at the very start of, of their feature career. Uh, so when I saw that the script was so good, I knew we'd be able to get good talent on and was able to, we were able to cast it with some amazing actors who are, you know, in very big TV shows like Aaron Moriarty's on Amazon's The Boys, which is Amazon's biggest series. And Jai Courtney is in the Terminator movies and Suicide Squad is, you know, these are, are, are big folks. And to get them to, you know, an, an independent film. Uh, is a real testament to Stewart's skill as a writer and and the confidence that he instilled in them as a director. So that's thank you, thank you, Katz. So this is the film is a uh, yeah. I, I'll just come to you. The film is a uh, U.S. Uh, U.K. Uh, co-production, and uh, this was earlier screened in uh, Tribeca uh, Film Festival. 2023 and also in Rain Dance uh, Film Festival 2023. So I'll we'll open the floor for questions now. Can we have the mics here? <coughs> I'm getting the mic. You can, you can speak in the mic, please. I think if you watch any of my films, <laughs> you'll struggle to see anything with much levity. I think I don't I don't know why I'm drawn to, to slightly more the more darker aspects of human psychology and, and stuff. To me, that's more interesting. I don't know what that says about me. I don't really want to, I don't really want to think about that. <laughs> but no, I think that I think that I think that for me, the reality of of human decisions is always both sides. And I think that, especially within the American film system, we focus a lot on the positive parts and don't explore the other side. And for me, that feels like an unexplored part of cinema in a way. And for me, a lot more interesting because I think it's real. And I think, you know, as humans, some of our darker moments at times, we struggle the most, some of the most dramatic. And I think that that's probably what drew me into those topics. There are definitely elements of this story that, that relate to my childhood, which wasn't the most harmonious, which is definitely a personal part of it. Um, and I felt like, the, for, in terms of the, 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 the nature question, I felt like nature was a good allegory that could run alongside the, the, the psychological development of our characters and, and also um, it created more of an intense vacuum almost for them. The, the isolation felt like it pressured them to, to go through this psychological change over the course of the story. Thank you. I think uh, the, the, the team has chosen, it deals with human emotions, conflicts, um, you know, a couple are trying to sustain their relationship in the face of conflicts and dismay. These are universal you know, subjects, uh, whether it's a couple in Texas or in London or in India, in Goa, wherever, they'll all be able to relate it. And maybe that's the one reason this film is getting such excellent reception across the world. Audiences across the world are able to connect with your theme, right? It is, it's, a, it's, a unique, it is a strange thing you can watch this human universality, you know, that we could connect to. And it is, it's, it's amazing that a film can get the response it has here, say in West Texas. I mean, I can write this story. I, I, think, I didn't grow up in West Texas, you know, but, but it's, a, it's one of the strange things about storytelling. 
Uh, I like to uh, share your experiences about the shooting, production, and all. Uh, I heard the, though the background, the film is set in Texas, the shot in Canary Islands. So, any challenges you face there? Yeah, please, please, Mark. Yes. Um, so, uh, we shot on Fuerteventura, which translates to Windy Island. We shot on 35 millimeter film. So um, that presented an immediate no, no. challenge. Why would you uh, shoot in 35 mm? Uh, that's um, a risk, right? I mean, uh, it, it's a risk that more than paid off if you, uh, yeah, if you see it on the big screen and see the visuals we captured and um, just the, 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 um, the beauty of this film is really uh, ingrained on the film. And, uh, and we're very, yeah, it, it definitely paid off, although at the time, it was a struggle. And we also, on top of it being windy, dusty, and all of the mechanical issues, uh, we also had to uh, courier our film from the Canary Islands to London, so we weren't seeing what we were actually shooting for a couple of days. Um, okay. So, yeah, that, that was certainly a major challenge, but um, again, one that paid off. Many so, so, so what are we shooting? See, today, you were not able to see it today. You had to, had to wait for that to be processed, and it was being processed where? Outside Canary Island? Uh, in the UK. Then it had, it had come back to you the next it day? It be scanned two, three days later. So <laughs> this is not something that in this day and age we're digital exactly. people are very used to. And, but it created all sorts of um, disciplines that wouldn't have existed otherwise. I mean, Stuart can talk more about that with the actors, but in terms of even just getting the production crew set up, and um, it created a real sense of uh, how to schedule everything very precisely having to um, have such strong discipline that um, that we knew exactly what we were doing every given day and with two or three days um, window to, to prepare for. You just have paid off. Uh, Stuart, I'd like to add to it what I was told. Yeah, just to, to touch on the the 35 millimeter film uh, part is that there, for me, there's no comparison visually between 35 mil and digital. Digital is a great tool and, and it's, it's made filmmaking much more egalitarian, but visually, aesthetically, for me, there's still no comparison. Um, but no, as Mark was saying, the discipline it creates is, is unique because film, uh, a lot of actors now are used to you just pressing the button on the camera and it rolls infinitely. They don't get a sense, there's no, there's no sense of, of uh, it, I think it creates a, like a more relaxed attitude. But with 35 mil, you can feel the film running. You can hear the film running through the magazine and you know it's got a time limit. And when you stop and everyone's loading the magazine, people realize when you press that button, it's time to focus. And it was actually, it, it, I think it made us work a lot faster, even though you have to slow down to change the magazine. And it made us a lot more sensitive to the fact that everything we captured was very important because we were not going to see it for three days. You know, so. But your crew was also, you know, they would have been working on only this digital format, no? Most of them, uh, they've not, never worked in 35mm probably, your uh, crew? No, we, we made, okay, so, you know, your camera team needs to know how to work on 35mm. Um, but some of the crew hadn't, no. And, and it doesn't really affect the rest of the crew, you know, that much. I mean, your lighting team should know how to light for 35mm. But if you've got a good director of photography like we had, Aurelian Mara, he knew how to, to, to get everyone doing what they needed to do. Yeah. Any questions? Please. Got the mic, yeah? That's <laughs> okay. What was the process of... It was quite surreal, honestly. It's, you know, like Mark was saying, you know, we and John, in the process of this, you know, we... This was just an idea over a coffee. And then to A, be accepted to the festival was huge. I mean, so let me just remove for a minute that the connection to India that I have through my, through my mother and just personally, just as a filmmaker to be accepted to a festival like this is huge. To, to then be um, told that you're opening night is such a massive achievement. And it's, it's kind of surreal because you make this film and we, we put so much love and passion into this film. You don't really know how people are going to respond to it. And it's part of the... Uh, the anxiety you get as a filmmaker, you have to become very confident in your choices and not worry about how people respond. And, and when people do respond, you know, positively, it's amazing. Again, bringing back in my Indian heritage to, to be to be the opening night film here and understanding the journey my family had been on. You know, my family left India at a time when it had been decimated by the British 
and like many Indians went to the UK and there's a big community of us there to bring it back here which is like the fruits of my family's labor who they worked every hour that God sent suffered a lot of racism in the UK to give us the, my, you know their offspring the, the opportunities that I have now means a huge amount huge amount yeah it was it was incredible honestly it's it, honestly it's the proudest moment of my life honestly it really is thank you thank you so much thank you so it's catching dust is a kind of it's like a slang term when something let's say you have something that you don't use a lot or something that doesn't get much action you say it's catching dust so it's that it's, pl it's a word play on that plus the fact we're in the middle of the desert basically it felt like the term catching dust felt like a good metaphor for Gina's the moment we meet Gina in her life where she's stuck and can't progress. Uh, yes, Lord, the kind of uh, subjects you choose, the mostly very current um, topical uh, social issues. I read about your short films, um, uh, My Beautiful Skin. Uh, spoke about skin lightning about uh, among the British uh, Asian diaspora. Then the Dead Sea, uh, wherein uh, you focused on uh, the journey of the Libyan refugees, the dangerous journey to Europe. And here, here again, one very, um, uh, very common theme which we can all relate to, which, which is very common in our society. So what make you choose such uh, themes? Um, I mean, if you want to give some message to the uh, society as such, what are you trying to convey through your art? I think art is such a, is a, a hist the history of art actually has been such a, a, an, an integral part of, of social justice and exploring themes that we, you know, that you, the art is a key part outside of, sort of normal di a political discourse. And, and, and I felt like I, had a unique opportunity growing up in the UK my family are from my mother was born in Bangalore but our roots are in Chennai my family are Tamil and skin whitening was something that was very prevalent at the time I mean I know that it's big here in India and, in, and still in, in the UK Asian uh, diaspora is, is very big and I felt like I was starting to see elements of that that were becoming normalized that I felt were a byproduct of colonialism you know of, of making yourself look more white not just lightening your skin make yourself look more white um, and it felt like something that was very personal to my family because my grandmother was very dark, my grandfather was very fair, and I could see how he was treated better mm -hmm. as a result of that. Um, so it was something that was personal to me, I felt like I wanted to, to, to explore. And then um, the Libyan refugee crisis was something that was very prevalent at the time in Europe. I think the reason why I'm drawn to those things... Yeah, is, that, that immigration part... Yeah, ex ex exactly. I know what it's like to feel my mother was an immigrant to this country. You know? Even my dad's side is Italian, you know, so they're Italian immigrants. So I, that, I think when you grow up as the, the family of immigrants, you feel connected to, to people's struggles in a way that you wouldn't if you feel the privilege of being part of the, you know, the masses growing up in the UK. So even though I, I look white, I definitely didn't grow up feeling white and I definitely didn't grow up feeling comfortable. I felt very comfortable in my Asian community, but outside of that, you know, the black community, we're very, the black Asian community, very close in the UK. Outside of that, you, you kind of sometimes don't feel as comfortable. And, and so therefore you feel yourself as part of a much bigger struggle with people across the world and that i think has drawn me to, to, to certain topics that maybe other people wouldn't be drawn so inspiration for your craft comes from your own life experience it's everything yeah 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 any questions uh, so you, if you can speak to mike it'd be good we are recording uh do you make short documentaries or short feature films generally they're short fiction films. Short fiction yeah, films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Short fiction films. The topics could be documentaries, but my I don't really know how to make documentaries. So. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mark, so Mark talked about the casting of the film. Um, did you know when you started who you wanted to star in the film, or did you go through a process of auditions to whoever? Sure. Um, I, I mean, we had a, w a wish list of, of actors, and of course, you know, any time that you're casting a film, it's the, the director has to be really happy with the choices and, and you know, you, you look at people's work and um, 
we were really excited about about Aaron and really excited about Jai and uh, you know big names. Right? I mean, you know, they, and it was when you're talking about the economics of film, you obviously want to have uh, actors in it that are recognizable, and we certainly achieved that. But on the artistic side, you also want people that you know are really going to get along well. So before we actually cast everybody, you know, Stuart did meet with the actors and and talk to them um, because he had to feel comfortable and they had to feel comfortable with him. And you know, because they're taking a, a risk with a first time feature director. But um, you know, it was it was certainly the the regular process of. of making your lists and who do you like and, and who's available and, and who is available to come uh, to work on, on you know, if, if someone is on a, a giant Amazon TV show, you know, you have a, a window of time that you have to fit into. And so things just aligned and we were able to fit, uh, you know, the actors we wanted and the time. And, you know, I think the results are on the screen. They, they put in wonderful performances. Uh, we have with us a teaser of the film. Just play it just for the benefit of those who have not seen. Can we switch off the lights, please? I won't be able to see it, huh? <laughs> no, it's, it's over here. The TVs are here in front, won't be able to see it. Take it. No, no problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. Take, my no, word for it. Take my word for it. It looked great. <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem. Yeah, Mark, from short films to a feature film, uh, what lessons have you learned? What was the challenge you found? I mean, from short film. Me or Mark? Sorry. No, I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm asking Stuart yeah. already. Yeah. The, it was, do you know the, the thing that really struck me the most is because, you know, short films, the most I shot was seven days. Okay, on a short yeah. film and then you work on a feature film and you're there for like three months and the thing that really struck me was from the moment you open your eyes until the moment you go to bed you have a million people <laughs> needing an answer from you and those answers have very important implications and you you really don't get any moment to switch off and it's and it and over a long period of time it, it, it takes a, a level of focus and 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 it's it's like a, a battle against fatigue really you know even psychological fatigue physical fatigue but luckily i'm 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 built for that kind of thing so it's all good you got some good producers also yeah exactly <laughs> they, 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 honestly they, they, otherwise most of the questions would have come from them only yeah they supported me like honestly like i couldn't have worked with two better producers but the way they supported me was incredible i had incredible support in my creative decisions and logistically they were amazing uh i have a question for jonathan you have worked with ed pressman for films like american psycho and wall street what did you see in Stuart's script well, you know, every every time you're looking at a script to decide whether or not it's something you want to work on, you want to you want to figure out is there is there an audience is this a, is a story that people can relate to? Is it are the characters drawn well and is the dialogue good? And and you know, in when I first read it, I thought, oh, this this is there's because you use in 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 the industry you get submitted a lot of scripts and a lot of them, quite frankly, are, are not good. And so when something is good, it stands out. And then beyond that, when it's something that you feel, you know, you can see the film coming together, you can see how to achieve it. And I, I mean, I, I like working with first time uh, feature directors. And I, I think it's it's a real opportunity, you know, to, to bring a new discovery, someone's new work to, to the to the screen. And it was a a terrific process and you know obviously we we had we had met and we had talked and 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 mark had worked with him before so there was a real vote of confidence there but yeah i think they've uh, fixed that glitch we can play the trailer now <laughs> hopefully it runs this time yeah can switch off the lights please No An issue again? It's not playing? Mm -hmm. 
I get full screen. All we gotta do is play cool. Don't raise hell. And they're gonna wanna leave. Okay, it's okay. Yep, yeah, we can switch all the lights. That's fine. Let's never give up, huh? Some issue with the format. Hey, thank you. Yeah. Lights, please. We have, yeah, question A. You know, it's funny, that was one of those moments actually where when we scouted that location and we talked about that scene, um, you know, I, I knew that we needed, we wanted to, to see through that. And the thing is, actually, I say I, it's me and my DP were very closely aligned. Like we felt like our, our tastes are very similar. So I'm, I'm, I'm someone who, who writes a shot list before you make the film. And then me and my director of photography talked about every shot and scrutinized it. But when we got there, we knew straight away we had to see something coming through that tree. Because just the way the, the wind moved through it was so beautiful, so poetic almost. It seemed like a great contrast between this violent action that's happening beneath it and this quite tranquil thing. And I think, in fact, that shot more than most captures that contrast that you see in the film of nature and violence, which is kind of inherent to nature. Oh. So can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, uh, my question is to the director. Now that you told that uh, your roots are, are were in India and you you feel more connected uh, with an identity of uh, Asian, so I want to know: Do you have um, any plans going forward to direct an Indian movie? I would love oh. to do that, hundred percent. Oh. But my style is kind of different. Uh, I grew up watching. I mean, and one of my favorite filmmakers is Satyajit Ray. So if I, if I can make those kind of films here, then I'm here. <laughs> That's why I just won't make any cuts in the end. <laughs> Stuart, you should also confess that it's the first time you're coming to India. It is. Thank, thank, thanks for exposing me. On <laughs> you know, it's funny. Everyone said it's, I'm embarrassed to say it's my first time here. And the thing is, is I say, it's so difficult for people to understand this. But when you're in London, where the Indian community is so strong there, being here, it's like, feels so familiar. It's crazy. It's not an excuse. It's not an excuse. But, um, but now I'm here, I, I've realized I need to be coming here a lot more and I will. Yeah, can I ask one question, please? Please. Yeah. History, we have watched the film and uh, congratulations for your film being the opening film of the EFI. Uh, in the film, you have used too much close-ups, actually. And uh, somewhere, somewhere, suddenly you show the eagle, group of eagles flying in the sky. And uh, you related the artwork with the life. Can you talk on these things? I felt like um, I'm definitely some, and you're right, I use a lot of those kind of close ups. I think that there's, it's the small details in life sometimes that can um, highlight the much bigger picture. And I felt like in this story where it's quite contained, that it was those details that would help layer the story that without them we would be stuck with just it's kind of more basic i think another filmmaker may have done this in a more basic way and i felt like it was important for me to really be able to focus on those details and the way nature develops around this story i felt like nature would respond to this this drama and, and that's part of why we see the uh nature focused on in the way that it is Uh, we have more questions. If not, uh, we'll close this interaction. Um, congratulations to the entire team, Stuart, 
Mark and John once again and uh, wishing you many more you know, for your feeling many more accolades and reception from across the world. Uh, thank, thank you all. Thank you for very joining. much. Thank you.